Well, good day. It's uh, dreary, drizzly, cool. I'm not complaining. We need the water. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about the something that was unique to me when I was in the Navy many years ago. And uh, there are a lot of unique things that happen uh, when you're on a ship. I was on a destroyer escort for a lot of my younger years. And uh, these old ships, there were things on there that, that you had to do. And, and one of the things that was rather unique uh, that you might find so was eating. And you'd wonder, well, why would eating be different or unique? Well, you're on a moving platform for starters. And uh, so if, if, if you were eating, we ate in a, in a uh, dining hall, so to speak, that had long tables that could seat four men on either side uh, and with benches and so you could slide it was a little hard to get in and out if you were in the middle but you could get yourself in and out of there and sit down and have something to eat now uh, on the tables were usually a stack of green mesh placemats and about this regular placement. And now if if everything was calm and you were sailing along and there was no problems at all, you could go through the line, the the uh, the uh, pick up your food, whatever you want to eat, grab something to drink, sit down, and it would be fine. You could eat and chat and uh, you could even go, you know, I mean, you, you had to be very, a little careful. Uh, you couldn't just get up and leave unless, you know, you would tell somebody, could you watch my plate? <laughs> Why? Because if, if we hit a swell or a, a wave or some sort or the ship maneuvered quickly, your plate would start to slide and if not careful, could slide right off the table. And uh, if that ever happened, and it has happened, then Murphy's Law always kicks in and your plate lands upside down on the deck. And so now you, you don't have food and you have to clean up, clean up your mess. Uh, one of the wiser things that you could do was to grab one of these green mesh placemats, put that in front of you, and so when you got your food, you put your plate on this it was like a semi-sticky, rubberized, green mesh thing. And uh, with that, uh, you could get up. You could go and grab another drink of some sort uh, or, or some duff, dessert. And you could expect that your plate was still going to be on the table where it was. Now, sometimes... Well, a lot of the times uh, the weather gets rough or you're doing some heavy maneuvering. And so when you, when you sat down and you grabbed your mesh placement and you put it there and you put your plate on there, uh, sometimes uh, it would, uh, if you're really, because a ship shudders, so to speak, as it's turning hard. Uh, so if it, if, if it went hard over to one side or the other for whatever reason, sometimes your, your plate would lift. So sometimes you'd have this uh, plate here and, and, and it would just sort of lift one side or it would lift the other side, uh, depending which way you turned. And uh, so at that point, you really needed to guard your plate because otherwise, and I've seen it a couple of times, if the ship is hard over in, in, a, in a turn or a sudden swell, sometimes the plate would lift up and flip right upside down right in front of you. So it's not on the deck anymore. 
Now it's oozing in between the green mesh thing that you had your plate on. And uh, so there are times when it got really rough that you would have to, you'd have to guard your plate. You would. And so your your forearms are on the on the table on both sides, your hands, and you can eat. And one hand is usually grabbing onto the lip of the plate itself, protecting it from flipping up side down. And this is the way you would eat, sort of hunched over. Your feet would be planted firmly, you know, shoulder distance apart, so you could uh, steady yourself for the turns. Uh, and uh, and you would guard your plate. There you go. You'd be, and, and if you did that, all all was well, uh, unless you had something sloppy on there or stew or whatever. You, sometimes you'd have to lift it so it didn't spill over the side. And uh, many times uh, uh, we'd have these rough seas and we'd spend a lot of time guarding our plates. And uh, then we'd get home. We'd come in to home port and uh, I'd go home. It'd be wonderful. And, uh, and, and Lois, my wife, she'd make a nice meal and put it on the table. And I had two young girls at that point. And uh, we would all sit at the table and I would start to eat like this, right? So here we are. Now I'm not at sea anymore. I'm at home. And uh, and I, I'm I'm guarding my plate, and uh, the girl sometimes says, "Why is Daddy guarding his plate? Why is he hunched over like that?" And Lois would tap me in the shoulder and and remind me, "Your plate's not going to slide off the table. <laughs> you're not, you know, you're not at sea anymore. You don't have to guard your food. You can eat like a regular human being, whatever that is." And uh, so we, we do that, right? Um, our scripture today, uh, you know, with all this in mind, <laughs> comes from the book of Proverbs, chapter 4, and verses 23 to 27. It reads this way. Put away, or uh, sorry, Watch over your heart with all diligence, or a lot of translations would say, guard your heart with all diligence. For from it flows the springs of life. Put away from your deceitful mouth and put devious speech far from you. Let your eyes look directly ahead and let your gaze be fixed straight in front of you. Watch the path of your feet, and all the ways your ways will be established. Do not turn to the right or the left. Turn your foot from evil. And so what the psalm, or what the, the proverb, what the author is trying to say here is that, uh, uh, that we need to guard our heart. Now, why would they select guard your heart and not things like guard your understanding or guard your judgment or or guard your memory well your understanding is subjective and um and and your understanding is really you know determined by the circumstances around you um, sometimes our judgment can be clouded by our biases or by our experiences, by the lens that we happen to be wearing at the time. And uh, our, our memory um, sometimes can fail us. I, I don't know about you, I'm, I'm not that old yet, but there are times I'll, I'll walk into the kitchen or I'll open, better yet, I'll, I'll open the fridge door and I'll think to myself, okay, dummy, <laughs> why you open the fridge? What are you looking for? Maybe it'll come to me. Maybe I'll have to start to walk away. Then remember, oh yeah, I want milk or butter or whatever, you know, and go back to it. Uh, there are many reasons why the heart is used here. Um, 
The heart is the region of our sensibilities, our intellect and emotions are controlled by our heart. Um, the heart is the source of really of all of our conduct. Um, we have to be very careful about our heart. Uh, we have to guard our heart. And um, listen, let's think about it this way. Now, we're living in some pretty odd times. We're living in some times that are uh, crazy, actually, unprecedented in this pandemic and what's happening in our countries uh, all around the world. And uh, ask yourself this, ask, and be honest with yourself, ask yourself this, what do you think what do you think about, or how do you feel and think about um, government officials or medical experts that are telling you that you need to uh, social distance or, or wear a mask? What do you think about or feel about people that tell you... Um, what you have to do before you can go into and out of a store. Many stores, you have to pump that antiseptic uh, into your hands. And uh, what do you think about or feel about people who tell you, especially for us who are Christians, what, uh, what we, you know, how many can gather in a church? And can't, do we have to wear masks inside the church? And can we sing or not sing? different officials and people telling you where you can go, where you can't go, where you can travel, where you can't travel. And, uh, and um, it's even more difficult for those who are followers of Yeshua, those of us who uh, follow Jesus. Because we're supposed to act and react differently than other people. So ask yourself, honestly, what do you feel and what do you think, what do you experience in your heart when you think about all of these things? The emotions that you're thinking about, the reaction of your body comes directly from the heart. Now, you have no real control over your emotions, believe it or not. Uh, happy, sad, angry, frustrated, mourning, joyful, uh, whatever that feeling is, you have no control over that. If someone, if someone upsets you or says something or causes, you know, you get to a store or you, you don't have your mask with you. You can't come in without the mask. And you have to lather up with all this stuff. And you have no control over what emotion you're feeling at the time. But what you do have control over is how you act and how you react with your emotions. With what you are feeling, what you're sensing. Your heart is, in essence, sitting on the green, sticky-ish rubber mat that my food was sitting on, my plate was sitting on those many years ago at sea. And, uh, and you need to guard your heart because if you don't guard your heart, then like the plate, when things get rough, and in, in what we're experiencing now, it's reasonably rough. Your, your plate could turn over. Things could spill out and off the plate. And your heart could turn over in essence in the same way. And things could spill out of your heart in words or in actions or in deeds that you may not want to happen.
if I didn't guard my plate, if I didn't put it somewhere that was protective, it would slide off the table. And your heart can do the very same thing. When the ship rolls and tosses and turns, or when life rolls and tosses and turns, things can happen. Now, like me at home, those years passed, after the danger's over, after the waters have subsided, after I was alongside uh, and at home with those that I loved, who loved me, I still had a tendency to guard, <laughs> I, I, I guarded my food still, even at home. And we need to guard our hearts, even when the rough stuff is past, even when you're feeling pretty good, the stress is sort of over, you need to continue, like I did at home, you, you need to continue to guard your heart. Why, you would ask, would I need to continue to guard my heart and guard my emotions when nothing's happening and everything's fine? Because, now listen to these words carefully, please. Because in the end, if you can guard your hearts against evil, then you are able to guard your hearts against good. Listen to that one more time. If you are able and capable of guarding your hearts against evil, you are also able to guard your hearts against good. Think about it. Think about it. Father, I just pour into us, Lord, today, your goodness and your wisdom. Help us to guard and protect our hearts. Help us to guard and protect our emotions from harming other people or making us look less than we truly are. Help us to understand what's happening in our bodies and in our hearts, in our minds. Help us to navigate life today, the difficulties of life. And maybe not just this pandemic, but for those that are struggling physically or financially or relationally or spiritually, Lord. Help us. Help us. I thank you, Father, for the abilities that you give to us to be able to live a good life, to be able to respect those around us to navigate through the difficulties of life with grace and mercy and love. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Watch, guard your hearts with all diligence. From, from it flows the springs of life, put away from you deceitful mouth and put devious speech far from you. Let your eyes look forward and your gaze be fixed in front of you. Watch your path of your feet and all your ways will be established. Do not turn to the right or the left. Do not turn your foot from evil. I know these times are difficult, and I know it's easy to blurt something out or to act in a certain way, but we must be very careful. 
And as hard as it may be for you who call yourselves a Christ follower, what you do and what you don't do, how you act, how you react, how you deal with your emotions, if you don't guard yourself, that will reflect on all Christians. I tell a story from years ago. I was riding with a buddy of mine, and he, uh, Nova Cold Consolidated, he had a freezer company, a big warehouse, huge warehouse. And we were riding in his truck one day, and uh, someone cut us off. I was younger, and uh, I had the urge to do some sort of gesture, I think, maybe, uh, or to yell something, and I, and I didn't because I realized that if I had done that, they wouldn't have seen me. They would have seen the sign on the side of the truck, the big one that said Nova Gold, Nova Gold Consolidated. And it's the same way with you and, and me. If we act or react or do things that are unbecoming, and people know that you go to church, they won't see you. They will see all of us. So be very careful. Take a moment to call somebody, tell them that they are loved, that they're not forgotten, not abandoned. That they're not lost in all of this. And tell them about this. Tell them that they, to remind them that, you know, in all of what the things that are going on, we really need to guard our heart. It's important. It's important. May the Lord help you to do that. May, may the Lord impart a wisdom to you and love you. And keep you close until we are able to gather again together. Amen and amen. I, in your neck of the woods, I, we need to pray for those down in, in the south of the border in the states, especially down on the Gulf, course, Gulf Coast as the, uh, uh, these two storms are coming in. One's there now and a hurricane is approaching. Uh, in that area, and let's let's pray for our sisters and brothers down in that way. Have a great day. Have the best day that you can.